So theta 1 is equal to 0, theta 2 is equal to 0, right? Times theta 1. Plus, what's the derivative of del f with respect to theta 2? Minus k divided by ml times theta 2. Is that okay? I have any trouble here? I'm just taking the partial derivative of this function with respect to theta 2. It is minus k ml. So it is over here. And this is again evaluated at theta 1 is equal to 0, theta 2 is equal to 0. Is equal to. What is this one? If you put a 0 over here, you get 1. So it is minus g divided by L times theta 1 minus k divided by ml. Right? There's nothing here. So it is theta 2, theta 2 dot. And that's your linear equation. Linearized around theta 1 is equal to 0, theta 2 is equal to 0. And the second equation was theta 1 dot is equal to theta 2. So that is linear already. So these are your two linear equations. Linearized around the equilibrium point. So we know in the close neighborhood of the equilibrium point, which is really this point here, this linear system is very close to this thing. Understood? Understood? Okay. So minus GL is a number, right? G is the earth acceleration, L is the length of the pendulum, K is that friction thing, mass, and, li and, and L the length. So these are actually numbers. So you have something like 2 and 3, right? So you have a linear system. If you look at the nonlinear equation, which is here, look at the nonlinear equation. If I ask you to linearize this equation, you could have made a small angle assumption on theta 1 and say immediately, the linear system will look like minus GL times theta 1, right? To, if you made a small angle assumption. And you obtained the same thing over here. You just have theta 1. So it is very similar to making a small angle assumption here. You could say, you know, it's a small angle because sine theta 1 is equal to approximately theta 1, and therefore you obtain this. So without going through this procedure, you could immediately say, you made a small angle assumption here and therefore it is, it is uh, you, you could make it linear like that. But this doesn't work all the time. If you have a complex system like the equations of an airplane, you can't make these quick assumptions. I mean, there, are, there are other terms that make it nonlinear. So then you have to go through a systematic way and this is a perfect way of doing this. You just take derivatives, you put numbers over here, you take the Taylor series and you obtain the linearized equation of the nonlinear system around the equilibrium point. Is that good? Any questions? All right. So what are we going to do with this now? Well, these nice equations, I can write them in matrix form. I can write them in a nice matrix form, for example, like this. Now I can write them in a very compact form. It will be 0, 1, minus g divided by L, minus k divided by ML, theta 1, theta 2. It's the same equation, just in matrix form, you see. And this is what we call the linear state space representation. Representation of the dynamic system, of the nonlinear dynamic system. But more than that, it is a representation of the nonlinear system linearized around the equilibrium point. It's not just a linear system, it is a linear system that represents a linearization of the nonlinear system around the equilibrium point, not any point. Okay? Good. So, 
Now that we have this, what are we going to do next? What are we going to do next? So we can do this, x is equal to theta 1 and theta 2, okay? So that was the states, these were the states, and we called it the state vector. What do you want to say? This is a state vector. So, and if you, if you would call this matrix here, this is a matrix now, if you call this A, you can simply represent this as x dot is equal to A times x. A is a matrix, x is a state vector. And the matrix is right here. Sir, yes? I wonder that is there any difference between stable and unstable Cauli frames with linear linearization? Well, that will be your homework. You will linearize the system around the non, non around the unstable equilibrium point. And you will see if the A matrix is different. Quick answer, yes. Okay? It will be different. Typically, if you linearize it around different points, the A matrix will change. Because this linearization will change, because the point will change. I mean, look at this. This is coming from the fact that this is calculated at zero. And it is coming from the fact that this is equal to zero. Okay. Um, yeah. My argument is, I mean, for stable equilibrium point, we yeah. will get the, this point again. Yeah. Point yeah. where we, uh, we linearize. Linearize, yes. But for unstable point, we will not come back there. Yeah. So what? So it may be different. I, I don't know. The A matrix will be different. This procedure will be the same. What you will find, you will find a linear representation of the unstable equilibrium point. Which means if you give it an initial condition, it will not come back, it will just go somewhere far away. Because it's a linear system, it will probably go to infinity. It will go to infinity. Okay? Because it's linear. You know, if you have a linear system like this, and you have an unstable equilibrium point, and you're going away from that point, you will basically go to infinity, you see? In this case, you will hopefully come back, right? It's a good question. Do you understand my point? Yeah. Okay, good. Any other questions? All right, so we have the linear system. It linearized around the equilibrium point. What's next? I'm, I want to look at stability. What do I do? Transform, what? Say again. Uh, remove what? Transformation. What kind of transformation? Laplace. Laplace transformation. We can use the Laplace transformation like you did in system dynamics. Before I go to this Laplace transform, I will show you the Laplace transform in a minute. But before that, let's be clear what we are trying to find here. Let's be clear what we are trying to find here. What is the equilibrium point? of this linear system. What is the equilibrium point of this linear system? Not the nonlinear, we know it's zero, zero. How about the linear system? What is the equilibrium point of the linear system? How do I find an equilibrium point? I'm sorry, you have to speak up, I can hear you. Uh, okay, the, the, this ones. Set them equal to zero. Okay, so what is it? I mean, it's simple. Come on. Zero, zero. Because you will set zero is equal to minus g l theta one minus k divided by m l theta two. And then zero is equal to theta two. So, right, basically setting these equal to zero. So you can find the equilibrium point. Theta 2 is equal to 0, it's already here. If you put this one equal to 0, then theta 1 will also be equal to 0. So the equilibrium point of the linear system is also 0, 0. Good. Yes? Uh, after the linearization, uh, should we decide or uh, determine the, uh, any interval for the uh, acceptable for that linearization? No. Not for the stability analysis. For the stability analysis, we are not looking at the validity of the linearization around the neighborhood. Because the word validity 
is a little funny. The reason is, if you look really close, everything looks far away. I mean, I can give you this, and I'll tell you this is the point, and linearize it, and you find something like this. Actually, the only point they are touching is this little point. Everywhere else, there's a distance between this line and this line. Now, if you look from a distance, well, it looks good here. But if you look really close, it will probably look very far even here. So, the word, is it valid or is it close enough, are all things that are relative understandings. It's, it's relative. Someone might say, if you look really close, they are so far away, it's useless for me. Someone might say, in this neighborhood, it's good for me. So how close is this line to this red line? Well, it's really up to you to decide as an engineer. Engineering is based on approximations. Everything we do, we, we, we start by saying, let's assume this, 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 then this formula is valid for this, this, this. What does it mean? Is it the exact representation of nature? Not really. But we probably don't need that exact representation. We need a representation that is good enough for what we are trying to do. Most of the time, or one of the jobs of a good engineer is to know what approximation to make so that at the end you can still build your airplane or what you're trying to do is useful. Okay? Um, so you understand my point. So, given, having said that, finding the stability of this equilibrium point is has not really anything to do with how valid this is with this because they are only touching at this point. And I'm not showing the theorem over here or not, I'm not proving any theorems, but you need to believe me. There's a theorem that says if you can show stability of the linear system around the equilibrium point, the equilibrium point of the nonlinear system will also have the same static stability characteristics. Okay, there's a theorem for that. And I will write it down in, in probably in the next hour. But this is something I will not prove in this class, but you just have to believe me. Okay? These are all very good discussions and questions, and these are questions that you need to answer in your mind. Okay, don't pass on these questions. These are very, very fundamental questions. Everything else if you don't understand this, it's just really use, uh, meaningless. It will not have the fundamental. So please ask questions if you have anything in your mind. All right. So, equilibrium point is this, and we found this, and that, and now we are going to, and this is the equilibrium point, which means the following. Let's say this is a zero point, and let's say this is theta one, and this is time. Okay, and let's say again, this is time, and this is theta two, and this is zero. All right, so if the system starts from zero, zero, what's gonna happen? It's gonna stay there, isn't it? So we are going to stay here, all right? And that's, that's what we found here, because then there's, if this is zero, zero, which means that theta one dot will be equal to zero, theta two dot will be equal to zero, which these are the time derivatives. So nothing will change in time, it will look like that. So if you, but if you start from somewhere else, if you start, let's say here, what's gonna happen then? Well, we don't really know, we have to solve the equations, but it might so happen that it might come back to the equilibrium point if it's stable, or it might just oscillate and then come back over here, we don't know might be doing some of these things, or it might just start diverging, or it might actually diverge oscillating, all right? It will do one of these things. So what would be really good is that if I would take the linear system, okay, take the linear system, start it from somewhere else, from another point other than the equilibrium point, and see what's, what is this doing. Is it coming back to the equilibrium point or is it going far away? Right? You know, that kind of analysis. 
So what would be really nice is to solve the linear system, solve the linear system, x dot equals ax, starting from x equals x0 at time equals 0, where x0 is not the equilibrium point. You see what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to see if the linear system is coming back to the equilibrium point to zero or not. Of course you might ask me, why didn't you do this for the nonlinear system? Start the nonlinear system from somewhere, not from the equilibrium point, and try to make it come back to the equilibrium point, the nonlinear system. The answer is we could have done that. But the solution of the nonlinear system is not always easy. In this case, it might be easy, but if you have a really big system with very complex equations, that is not easy. However, you will see in a minute that the solution of the linear system is a bit easier. Therefore, you could do this for this linear system a lot easier than for the nonlinear system. So, what we are trying to do is start not from the equilibrium point, not from the equilibrium point, start somewhere here and see what's going to happen in time, in the long run. Is it going to come back to the equilibrium point or is it going to diverge from the equilibrium point? So let's start from some x0 and see if it's going to come back. And we're going to do this for the linear system because it's easier. Is that fine? Good. So, how do I solve this now? How do I solve this? In order to make this problem a little easier to handle, let's give numbers to these values, to these subscripts. Okay, let's give numbers so that it's a little easier. So let's make it a numerical example. So which means, let's say g over l is 2 and k divided by ml is 3. You know, something rather simple. So that the whole problem becomes easier to solve. So you have this, so it's 0, 1, minus 2, minus 3, theta 1, theta 2. Now this is my system, okay? Minus 2, minus 3, just to make it a numerical example, just to make it easier for us to handle, okay? And I say, with Theta 1 is equal to C1, Theta 2 is equal to C2, at time is equal to 0. So at time is equal to 0, at the initial point, at the beginning, Theta 1 and Theta 2 is somewhere C1 or C2, which is not equal to, which is not equal to 0, right? These are not equilibrium points, therefore it will move, it will change in time. And these are the equations that will describe the system, the dynamics of this linear system, how it is going to behave in time. Okay, so we are expecting something like that. We are expecting that we should be able to plot theta 1 as a function of time and theta 2 as a function of time if theta 1 starts at C1 and if this one starts at C2, and let's say this is the zero point. So because this is a stable equilibrium point, I know it's going to come back to this point. I don't know how, but it will come back to this point. It will come back to zero somehow. Maybe oscillating, maybe not oscillating, but it will come back. So I need to find this curve. How is it going to come back to this equilibrium point, starting from C1 and C2, given the equations that describe the dynamics of the linear system? So, how do I find this? How do I find these curves? How do I find theta 1 as a function of time? How do I find theta 2, sorry, as a function of time? How do I find them for a linear system? How? 
Yeah, how do you take the integral? Want to take the integral? And maybe tell me a solution? Take the Laplace transform and then do what? Okay. From the S domain, we can take uh, the reversal of the Laplace transformation, and then we can uh, look at the time domain. Okay, so we take it to the Laplace domain, and then take the integral over there, and then take it back to the time domain. That's a good way of doing it. Any other suggestions? Yes, please. I can, we can use eigenvalues. Okay, how? Homogeneous systems of ODEs, oh, I'm getting very confused. It's, do you <laughs> yeah, no, no, no I, I understand your point. Yes, go continue. Uh, yeah. um, how can I we can use eigenvalue problems and so on and so forth. That's good. So both answers are correct. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm going to, uh, but I, uh, you know, uh, you know me, I'm trying to be more fundamental. So let's, let's, let's look at a little bit from a more fundamental point of view. Let's look at this. <laughs> we are trying to solve this equation, right? Because it's a second order system, we have a matrix and x is a vector of two because it's a vector, right? So this is a two-dimensional system. Let's assume for a second, let's make it an example, let's assume for a second, let's make it a simple, what would be the solution if this was a 1D problem? Basically, if x dot was equal to a times x, where a is a scalar, and x is a one-dimensional vector, it's x is x, it's, it's a real number, okay? And x is equal to x0, at t is equal to zero. So this is, at t is equal to zero, at the initial condition, x is equal to x zero, okay? And this is a differential equation. So x dot is basically this, dx dt is equal to a times x, which starts at x is equal to x zero, at t is equal to x. So what I'm asking is, please find x as a function of time, if you start from x zero, so that's x zero, so I, I, I wanna see what this function looks like, right? It's a very similar problem. The difference is this is 2D, two-dimensional, and this is just a one-dimensional problem. I assume that you'd learned this one-dimensional problem in differential equations or somewhere. Okay, so can someone tell me the solution of this problem? Let me give you exactly two minutes and I would love for you to work on this and tell me the solution. Please work by yourself and try to find the solution for this. Differential equation x dot equals ax. x starts at x zero, it's time equals zero. I want to know what the time history of x will be.
Okay, if you have a solution, please raise your hands. So, yeah, let's start here. Yeah. Um, like is it equal to constants multiply? Which constant? Just tell me the solution. Uh, okay, I don't know. You don't have a solution. Okay. Yes, please. Power A. A T. Okay. That's it. Plus C one. What is C one? Initial. So it's X zero. Okay. Okay. Any other solutions? Let's start here. Yes. X zero. Okay. Any other solutions? Any other solutions? So, do you agree with this one? So, is this one the correct one, or this one? Second one. Okay, good. So, this is the one. So, how did you find this? You. You didn't seriously take the Laplace transform, did you? <laughs> did you? Okay, how did you find it? How did you find it? So you took an integral, okay. How did you, any, any other way of finding, how did you find, I don't know. How did you separate the variables? Mm -hmm. What do you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, basically, I took the x to the left hand side. Okay. And then I took the z t over the over the uh -huh. right hand side. So basically, I had the left hand side x variables, and for the right hand side, uh -huh. I had the Okay. Okay, that's one way of doing. There are many ways of solving this, right? One way I, you could do is you can assume a solution and see if it works, right? That's the typical way you assume a solution and then see if it works. For example, is this correct, right? We can we can check. Let's put it into this equation and see if it works. How do we do it? Take the integral with respect to. Take the integral with respect to time, right? And see if it works. Take the derivative of this with respect to time, what do you will get? X zero times A times A, A T is equal to A times, X is this one, X zero times E to the power A T. Is it the same? Yes, okay, so it satisfies this thing. Does it satisfy this? Let's look at this. If t is equal to 0, this one will go to 1. So x is equal to x0 when t is equal to 0. So this is also satisfied, so okay. This is a solution. So you can assume a solution and see if it works. Okay, this is something we do where it's very typical in, 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 in uh, differential equations. So assume a solution and see if it works. Now here's an interesting thing. Let's, let's, I mean, I was trying to find this, right? X is a function of time and T. Let's say A is a positive number. What's going to happen now? We start at X0. What's going to happen if A is a positive number as, as T goes to infinity? Diverge, right? It will go to, it will, it will uh, exponentially diverge, actually. I mean here. If A is positive, then it will exponentially diverge. If A is negative, what's going to happen then? Converge to zero. Let's say this is zero, so it will converge to zero. In fact, it will converge exponentially to zero. Right? So without even solving this, just by looking at this number, I could probably tell you if the system is going to go to infinity or just go to zero. You see? Without even looking at this. What if A is a complex number? A is equal to, let's say, um, I have to make up a variable now, something like 
uh, A1 plus B1I. Let's say A is something like that. What happens then? It will oscillate. Why does it oscillate? Because simply it will, it will look like this. The, the solution would look like this. Um, Xt is a function of x0 e to the power a1 plus b1i times t. That would be the solution. And that would be equal to x0 plus e to the power a1 t times e to the power b1 i t. So, right? If, if a was a complex number. So this one here will look like this. This e b i t, right? i being the complex number here, will be cosine b t plus i sine b t. Right? You can write this exponential as a function of cosine and sines. So this part here is nothing but an oscillation. You see, it has only sines and cosines, which means this can only be plus one, minus one, each of these terms. So they will never go to infinity or come back to zero, but they will oscillate in one way or the other as a function of sine and cosine. So this part is nothing but an oscillation which will never go to infinity or come back to zero. But this part here, now A1 is very important because A, if A1 is positive, then it will be multiplied with, the oscillation will be multiplied with something that is increasing. If A1 is negative, it will be multiplied with something that is going to zero. And as t goes to infinity, this term will go to zero and it will be multiplied with an oscillation and it will be basically zero. You see? So therefore, what's going to happen is this x0 here, you start from here. If A1 is a one is a positive number, you will oscillate something like that and it will grow. The oscillation, the oscillation is coming from here. But it will grow, it will grow because A1 will grow. I mean, A1 is positive and therefore this term will grow. But if A1 is negative, it will go to zero eventually. But there's an oscillation, so it will eventually be oscillating and slowly coming back to zero. So it will be an oscillation that will decay or it will be an oscillation that will uh, go to infinity. Okay? So who's de deciding if the system is stable or unstable if A is a complex number? Who? B1 or A1? A1. Because it's all about this A1. And therefore it is all about this guy here. Who is this guy? It's, it's the real part of the complex number. Remember the story of real versus imaginary and then you look at the roots and say if it's on this side it is stable. What does it mean it's, if it's on this side? It means the real part is a negative number. The real part is a negative number. It will oscillate but go back to zero and therefore it is stable. Therefore all roots have to be on this side. We will come back to this in the next hour. But this is where the story is coming from. The real part has to be negative. And if the real part is negative, the oscillation will decay. If the real part is positive, we go to infinity. If A is not a complex number, then we are just look at A. If A is negative, it will go to zero. I mean, come back to zero. If it's a positive number, it will increase infinity. So, coming back to this problem, this was the whole idea. Just give me this problem and I will look at A and I will tell you if the system is stable, unstable, oscillating, whatever. I just need to look at the sign of A or if A is a complex number or not. If A is just a, a real number, I mean I said here scalar so this doesn't make sense anymore, it could also be a complex number, but if it's a positive or a negative number, you immediately know if it's stable or unstable, you don't have to solve this whole thing. So something similar should be able, we should be able to do for this. 
because this is a 2D problem, something similar, which means just looking at the A matrix, we should be able to say something about the stability of this system. Okay, very similar to this. And I'm going to show you in the next hour how we can look at the A matrix and immediately say something about the stability of the equilibrium point. Now this would be a great benefit because we have the nonlinear system coming from Newton's equations. We found the equilibrium points, we linearized it around the equilibrium points, and now I have a matrix, and just by looking at that matrix, if I can tell you if the equilibrium point is stable or unstable, this would be perfect because then I can take an airplane, write the equations of motion, find the equilibrium point of that airplane, and then immediately tell you, just by looking at that matrix, if that equilibrium point of that airplane is stable or unstable. And then you, it is an analytical way of analyzing stability of equilibrium points. You see? It's very similar to this idea. But it will be in 2D, 3D, 5D. Now you can expand this. This A matrix can be 10 by 10. It will still work. Okay? So in the next hour we'll do this. So let's give a break.